Yeah, yeah, Dustin. Now, this is my first time I ever I get it. getting to cast. It's going to be good. You know, I, I, uh, we were just talking about in the Q&A that the only experience I've had with uh, Here's the Storm is on the original uh, tribute map. Oh, yeah, this is a very different map. I've only seen this on BlizzCon. So right, I know so a little bit about got it. Here. On the left-hand side, we've got the blue team with Sergeant Hammer, Tyrael, Nova, Taronda, and Chef Stitches all ready for action there. Let's take a look at the right-hand side of the map. We've got Red playing as Tinker, as Witch Doctor, as Arthas, as the elite Torin Chieftain and Malfurion, our druid there, and they are absolutely ready to go. We got a couple of skins in there too. Looks like we got uh, Blood Arthas in there as well. I'd like to point out to everybody: this is an alpha version of this game. This is a live cast. Battle it could totally mm -hmm. crash. Anything Ten could happen seconds. at this point. And I'm just going to sit here the whole time, living in fear of something horribly, horribly wrong going here in Five, this uh, software. Four, um, but we wanted to show three, this game to you guys. So we thought we'd take our chances nine. and put it out there. The other thing I'd say too is we didn't get any uh, beta questions when we were discussing it with the uh, Q and A earlier on. Um, we are working as hard as we can towards that beta, but we do not have a date to announce yet. But we will get it out to you guys just as soon as we can. So you see the game is reasonably far along, so our biggest concern at this point is making sure that our technology is in position, that we can handle the load of the number of players who are interested, and we can get ready for all the people who want to play this game. So key to this map is controlling the uh, areas around the mines. And you see these players lining up to do that right now. We got Malfurion, we've got Witch Doctor down here at the bottom. That's a reasonable combination. With Nova there lurking just out of position in the shadows, I think Blue's got the advantage in the bottom position. Finlines, oh, Arthas gets held, holding range of the towers. He's getting a little bit of trouble right there. Um, ETC comes in to try to bail him out. It looks like Tirana's gonna pay for this pull. And down she goes, red with first blood, even though it was Blue team that got the hook. We're having a little mic difficulty here with Sean right now, so he's being okay. suspiciously quiet, but I think he might be back in action right now. It's all now. right. No, I just I just need the microphone stabilized. That's all I need. It's falling off my face, but guess what? I'm observing, and I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm going to be great. asking questions. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not going to just stand over here at some point. I'm not. That would not be great. I am no, I am no Bronze League observer, but... <laughs> I mean, we're seeing a lot of like, you know, the the usual mechanics uh -huh. of, you know, the MOBA genre, but like for me, I have very limited experience in the genre at all. I sure. mean, I've, you know, I've watched some LCS, I've played a couple MOBA games in general. So, you know, I'm familiar with some of the basic roles, but like, this is not the usual three lane map. No, this is our two lane map, and this is because we have so much space in the Haunted Mines, which we're gonna open up here in just a little bit. What everybody's doing right now is they're fighting for position and trying to get off some early advantage. They can get a level difference at this point. So we have team levels in this game, so they can go up one level above the enemy. That will be a huge advantage. You can see right now the red team is actually up one level. So by the time those mines open up, you want to have a level advantage if you can swing it. And blue is in a little bit of trouble right here down on those levels. Uh, and now they just caught up again. So it's not much of an advantage red has ha got. In addition to that level advantage, you want to get the positional advantage. If you can push back these minions into these towers and really sort of gain control of the area around the mines, you'll be in a position to get down into the mines and prevent the enemy from doing it at all, or certainly delaying their arrival into the mines, which again, will earn your team um, the benefits of the mines. We'll see those come online for those of you who haven't seen this game or know what I'm talking about, that question to discuss it. When you get down into the mines, you'll see these mines will open up, and when you go below, you collect skulls. And when all the skulls are collected, a grave golem will be built by both teams. And how many skulls you've collected will determine how big your grave golem is. So the more skulls, the bigger your grave golem, and that grave golem will push. Whoa, big hook there on ETC. It's a little bit of trouble. He's trying to get out of there. I think Nova drops him. Well done by Nova. And it looks like uh, looks like a Toronto might pay again. Oh, Daybringer just gets away. Daybringer is uh, Brett, one of our balance liners, really strong player. Watch him for to do very well with that character as the game progresses. All right, so right now it looks like they're trying to maintain control of this. Like yes. how how does the strategy work with trying to go into the mines? So you watch, I've... it's just about to happen. Even now, we're just there. The uh, mine has just opened up, and the uh, units have spawned. So now. If you go down, you'll see them cross over here in a minute. Tyrande looks like she's going to go. So go down to the bottom of the map. That's right, down there. And you can see Tyrande has now moved into this whole other area of the map, which is the mines. And she's going to go down here and try to collect the skulls from these yeah, skeletons down there. There's one skull. She's collected one. You can see there at the top of the screen, Blue has collected two skulls out of 98 skulls remaining. Red is coming down here, closing in. Tyrande in a little bit of trouble. She's surrounded by ETC and Gazel the Tinker there. Yeah, wow. Insane. I was saying great things about Brett, and he just got crushed. <laughs> um, so it looks like uh, Blue has got a little bit of advantage in the mines in terms of Skull Click, but you saw Red had a strong presence down there in the mines in the top position. We still have um, a couple of players staying up, tight, up top just to collect uh, experience points from those minions. If you leave all of the lanes, 
your team's gonna get no experience points from those lanes. So it sometimes makes sense yeah. to click some up top as well. I mean, are, are they getting experience in lower lanes? Or they are getting experience on their well, okay. but remember, it's shared team experience. So you need someone at each location where experience points is being generated, and then your team will get access to that experience point. So you kind of are encouraged to spread out. Obviously, as things get serious, you want to bunch up for the team fight. So it's sort of a difficult strategic choice. You Ooh. see here, ooh, this red is really moving well together there as they maneuver around. Green, a blue in a little bit of trouble. Red clustering well, there's a back attack there by Sergeant Hammer. Arthas, a little bit of danger. Down goes Witch Doctor, and Tyrande coming in as well. I think Red is getting surrounded here. Three, two, five, and absolutely annihilated. It looks like they're in total trouble. Another one down. I mean, tons it was, and tons of kills for Blue in that spot. Every single hero is in the mines. I mean, is this is this pretty standard? I mean, yeah. I know that this is the big source of skulls, this mega dude. Yeah, it's, it's pretty typical at this stage of the game. Later on in the game, as the heroes go up in levels and the mercenaries become a bigger part of the experience on this map, sometimes you will see players be a lot more strategic about who does and who does not go down into the mines because you simply can't afford to leave your bases up top undefended or you might be able to do more damage up top by leaving a few heroes up there. But at this early position, generally speaking, advantage in the mines is what you want. There's not a lot to be gained by staying up top and so you see some yeah, players stay up top to maintain some kind of experience points advantage but they won't leave any serious forces up there and generally speaking they'll commit everybody to the mines below. So I mean right now it looks like Red is just trying to abate as much damage as they can yeah. in the mine to try to lower that, and they're pushing yeah, really hard up on the top. I mean, right. there's yeah. only really one blue hero down in the south lane. Yeah, so Red was Red is sort of lost out in the mines. They knew they didn't get the lion's share, so they left blue to clean up down there, and while blue was cleaning up, Red tried to get something done, and so they went back and they got themselves a mercenary camp there, and now they're pushing hard against these lanes, trying to gain some kind of advantage from their defeat in the mines. Obviously, those golems are going to come up, and it's got 64 golems to 36, so blue has the golem advantage, but honestly, at this point, that was a little bit of a, a fairly even exchange. I like the golem advantage for blue, but I think red did manage to get some stuff done down here. They've really pushed that top tower. They've got some minions down here. There's some, some of these siege giants that, if they're protected, which they need to protect them right now, might be able to do a significant amount of damage to that uh, base as well. So red is still absolutely in this game, even though that battle for the mines didn't really go that way, and you can see in the kills up there, they are struggling a little bit on the kills at 8 to 3 in favor of blue. Okay, so well, walk me through a little bit of some of the, the, the more basic mechanics, because I mean, every MOBA game has its rules about how experience sharing works, about where the big chunks of experience are. Actually, maybe we should wait, because the yeah, golems are on the field. <laughs> so that golem is just going to charge those towns. He's just going to honey badger his way forward and smash everything he possibly can that gets in his way. Um, and so you can see he's going to blast his way through these towns, and a big team fight's going to develop right here. We've got a bunch of battling going on here. At the same time, those siege giants are moving to engage as well. So. Um, this is a big advantage right there for uh, blue in that top lane. In the bottom lane, you can see how much smaller the, the, the Grave Golem is for red. And quickly, Tyrande, their Daybringer, is going to drop that Grave Golem and really end that threat. While up top, this is going to likely crack this front gate. And the blue is not really protecting this Golem very effectively. So it looks yeah. like red's going um, to get take this down as well for not a ton of significant damage. They, they took a beating here, but it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Well, I mean, how much should a team be focusing on protecting his own golem versus destroying the enemy team's golem? Like, what, it, it what really are the depends sort of... on the scenario, depends on the, the, the characters you have in play, it depends on how much damage your team has taken in that area of the map already. At this stage, it, you can really make some choices. Later in the game, sometimes the golem will really force your hand. You can see a big team fight is developing up here in top lane. The carnage is everywhere, yeah, and it insane. looks like Blue is once again, well, I don't know, they're backing up. I thought they were in good position there based on the damage, but they're all pretty wounded. And with that ultimate cast by Malfurion, all of those healing is really kept in this game. Malfurion gets hooked by Stitches, immediate support coming from everybody around him. Stitches in a lot of trouble right there. Starfall coming from Tyrande doing a lot of damage as well. ETC trying to get off his ultimate, doesn't really catch anybody <laughs> in it. And Blue and Red, he both lose a hero in the yeah. resulting battle, and Blue Blue getting absolutely hammered. So earlier on, it looked like Blue was doing very well in the team fights. So you can see the kills are starting to even up. But now at 10 kills for Blue and 7 kills from Red from previously, they were down like by 5 or 6 kills. You know, I'm, I, a lot of these abilities are the first time I've ever seen them, but of course, having played a lot of Warcraft 3, you know, being a big strategy game, I recognize a lot of them just based on yeah. the art. I mean, how often are those assets... How the important is that for it to, you know, to yeah, connect the back to the previous franchises? They've so, they've so changed over the years that we can't use exactly the same assets. We're using the same visual clues so that uh -huh. you can have that recognition between the different heroes. So if you've seen a Starfall from a you know, Warcraft 3 hero or whatever, you have a chance to recognize that when you get into the game as well. And we're obviously, we're trying to make as <laughs> much of those connections as we can. There's, that's, uh, yeah, chef stitches on the back of a unicorn. Uh, wow. <laughs> sort of a, Some kind of Nyan Cat entry. Yeah, exactly. Just one of our classic moments here in Heroes. It looks like Blue's getting a little frisky here. Red wants some more payback. They've got stitches and material. These are two very tough, very difficult heroes to drop. 
Um, and they do want to take him out. And there's a retreat under the mines for Tyrael. He knows he's in trouble. He's surrounded by four heroes. He says, the heck with it. I'm going to make a run through it for the empty mines. They can chase me. As long as uh, I draw them away from the enemy, I'll be in a happy place. So he manages to get out of what was certain death by using the mines. A really clever use of that. Red cluster here very well. It looks like Malfurion's in a little trouble. Down he goes from a shot from Sergeant Hammer. Tyrande running as well, and Red really being very aggressive here, pushing these guys all the way around. It looks like Tyrael gets caught down in the mines, but just makes sure to fend it off. I mean, we're seeing it looks like the Red team stay together most of the time. I mean, yeah. typically we see in most MOBAs, I mean, how fast are we? How, how far into the game are we at this point? Like just um, I think yeah. eight, probably, ten minutes yeah, or so. Yeah, something like that. We used to have a clock, but we don't have it working in observer mode right now. But we're still very early in this game. The whole yeah. thing will probably be over by twenty to twenty-five minutes at the outside. I've had like one thirty-five minute game in internal alpha, but it's extremely rare. Yeah. Um, so the games are very, very quick. Oh wow, that's a lot of trouble for Toronto right there. She is getting a b protected by Tyria with that shield, but you see those two tanks really want some blood off it. There goes the starfall. Down she goes. Here comes ETC <laughs> into the fight one as well. Star you know, I mean, but we're seeing so many more team fights than what you'd typically see oh, yeah. in almost any other existing MOBA. I mean, it, obviously on a two-lane map, it's well, much yeah, it really easier to rejoin on the map. together. So we're not going to be able to play on it today because it's still uh, back under construction. You see the mines are open again. There's a lot of action going on here. Uh, if you're looking at, you know, a map like um, Dragonshire, where you need to control all three lanes simultaneously to get the benefit of the map mechanic, you see a lot fewer team fights. You see the players really splitting up, and that's the oh, point of that. This map. is the perm cloaking that, that you were telling the me perm about. Cloak. So he didn't, even, he, he, he didn't really notice it was coming. It was difficult to see in the mines, and he's really going to pay nice dance wow. by Gnome. He's one of our balance designers. Very good. That's Matt Cooper. You may remember from. Uh, his famous days on uh, StarCraft, and down he goes. Um, just a little bit of trouble right there. That's not the battle engagement he wanted to have right there. And this is a critical time for them to lose him. He's one of the stronger players, and he can be very effective down there in the mines. You can see the skull counts very even on both these players right now. And as in the mines, you can see there is some gathering of players. Blue has got position right there on that final golem to get the bulk of the skulls. But red is starting to stream in a little bit here. So I don't know if control of that boss is very clear at this point. Uh, red now with significant advantage wow. in the mines, three players to two down in the mines. And now all of blue dropped down to the mines, and yep. it seemed like, I mean, is there strategy here, the fact that they've lost these two, uh, this set of towers and forts up at the north end to try to make up for it by getting a huge golem? Yeah, they're gonna want to get the biggest golem they can possibly get at this point to really push, and you can see they're moving in here. Is it just stitches? It is. The mini-map, we actually need to make this mini-map larger. It's very difficult for Sean and I to tell what's going on in the game. This is one of the feedback we've had from an internal alpha, and I'm sure you guys at home would say the same thing. It's difficult to see what's happening in that mini-map, but it looks like stitches. Is he gonna try to solo that? It looks like he is. There's a team fight developing up, and uh, Stitches has the ability with his Devour to really get a lot of health back from the enemy uh, unit, but I don't think he's got the firepower to necessarily engage a fully functional Golem like that. Maybe he'll get some support a little bit later on. Looks like uh, Witch Doctor in a little bit of trouble here, taking a little bit of beating from Sergeant Ember. Oh, there's oh. the long range shot from Toronto, just narrowly misses, <laughs> and Tyrael gets the kill. ETC came for the rescue and now in a little bit of trouble, but ETC is pretty mobile. I expect him to get out of there safely. Let's see what's going on down in the mines with Stitches. He's still dancing with this Greycom, making it work, dodging all those abilities, really struggling. This is a long time for Stitches to be out of action, but you know what? He's managed to pull it off and get a solo kill in that column. That's a huge, huge benefit for the team, even though it did take him out of action for a long period of time. Look at all those skulls. Yeah, you know Huge. Well, yeah. as, as the golems are summoning, walk me through a little bit of like how the XP sharing worked. We asked that like right as they yeah. were summoning last time. Yeah. So what happens is every time you get EXP, you get EXP for the team, which goes in towards your team level. Uh -huh. So you really want to try to have a, a people everywhere on the map that EXP can be earned. You want to have every, at least one person in every lane, if you can manage it, and you want to have um, some people maybe going out and grabbing some of the mercenary camps, whatever, to get some additional XP. But one person in each lane is sort of oh. the minimum requirement um, in order to make it uh, function. Yeah. Um, obviously, when the team fights are happening, it's not worth it to keep one person in each lane. It's just too dangerous. There's the Grave Golem popping up. There's ultimates oh firing God. off everywhere at this point. Absolute beating going down on both teams. Nobody quite dropped yet, but Blue in a lot of trouble. Look at all those engine heroes running for their lives. There goes somebody. Two T heroes down at this point. Man, it's just a bloodbath as that Grave Golem. I think he's going to drop that thing very successfully at this point. There's a little tiny Grave Golem over here. He's going to do some damage, um, and I think he will drop that town as well, but that town was in a lot worse shape than his top town is. So, I mean, the Grave Golem is just for pushing these yeah. towers. They don't yeah. actually ever engage other heroes. They, they, they put some area effects around them that can uh, hurt other heroes pretty significantly, but no. Their primary focus Please is the towers. They will just sort of charge the nearest tower and start beating on it as fast as they can. I also got really excited when I found the StarCraft Observer button still worked. Oh, oh God. Please oh, don't yeah. crash. 
<laughs> I'm just living in fear. Oh, Whenever Sean so hits good. another button, I, I just die a little bit more inside. Like, oh, I hope it doesn't go down on this. You know, I really feel like my purpose here <laughs> in this cast is to be as dumb as possible. Like, what are these buttons doing to rake the keyboard? <laughs> I lose years off of my life from this one shout cast. So, I mean, like, this is also a mechanic I'm unfamiliar with. The idea of you kill these and yeah. then they join in yeah, on pushing join the lines. On your side. So all of our, you know, the game is very team focused. So everything you're doing in the jungle, everything you're doing in the lanes for the most part is focused on trying to help your team achieve victory. There's not a lot of sort of selfish things that you can do in this game where you're trying to do things to make yourself more powerful. You're always trying to do things to help your team win the game. So you want to focus yeah. on teamwork, focus on what your group needs to be effective. And so it can be a very strategic game in the sense if you do the wrong thing at the wrong time, you may not be helping your team at all. You may be um, wasting valuable precious time. One fifth of your team may be in the wrong place at the wrong time. So we found that communication on these teams is really, really important. And the teams, you really want to group up with your friends to play this game. It's the most powerful way to enjoy the experience. There's well, some like leaping into battle. Every single red hero just lined up. Starfall, I can recognize that from a mile away, doing some work in mid. Yeah, this is absolutely going to be a huge, huge team fight at this point. Uh, and as red, you can see red's got all these mercenaries pushing. Um, and they're taking an absolute bloodbath here in the middle. It looks like it's fairly even on kills. There's two down now for blue. Red doing very well. Malfurion in a lot of trouble. There goes Malfurion down as well. You can see at the top left and right side of the screens the pictures of all of the heroes with their timers, death timers up as well. So it is three on three right now, but it looks like it's about to be Soon three to be two on, on two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As another hero goes down and blue in a little bit of trouble. Look at those mercenaries pressing in. Remember early in the game, it didn't look like I, I was feeling a little bit worried about red. They were losing. Losing. They lost that first team fight, they lost that first grave yeah. bomb, and now they are right back in this, really knocking on the front door in both lanes. I mean, it almost seems like a whack-a-mole. I mean, it's not just centered around the team fight, because it looked no. like Red took a pretty sick beating, but they were focusing on the mercenaries first, so those seem to do a lot of work independently of the heroes. Yeah, the is that actually accurate? Yeah, absolutely accurate. The strategy is so important in this game, where to go, and there's a lot of misdirections you can do, and there's enough mechanics on the maps that you can some often pull off a surprise victory. You can often get into a position where the enemy didn't expect you and do something they weren't prepared for. It looks like Gazzle's a little bit of trouble there. Down he goes. Here comes ETC jumping in to try to help out his buddies. He's a little late to the party. He's going to face a three-on-two situation as he and Arthas get out of there. It looks like uh, Wish Doctor was trying to make it in, but she was a little late as well, and so they're forced to pull back, and now we've got mines spawning again. Now this is... This is it, guys. This is the critical battle. Blue has lost uh, the paint job on their front towers. Red has still got um, their bottom tower, but their top tower is, is gone. And this Grave Golem could be the absolutely determining battle. Red sending a bunch of guys to the mines. They are committed. They believe the mines is the way to go to win this game, and I'm not sure that they're Jeez. wrong. Um, Blue is only, it looks like, only got Nova in the mines to me. Blue a little indecisive here about what they're doing. Uh, really a watchtower? I don't think that's really as important at this point as everything else that's going on. And it looks like Blue's going to lose Nova as well. So now they're down a hero for what I would think is the critical battle of this match to determine who wins this game. And Blue is sending some more people into the mines. This engagement in the mines, if and when it comes, is probably going to be the de deciding point for this game. I mean, as you were talking about with the importance of keeping the team together, we see Blue getting a little spread out here, or now some of the red heroes getting a little spread out and getting punished so quickly for it. There's Witch Doctor using his ultimate ability. That ghost does a ton of damage and chases people around with it. You can just trash people. There's Star Force pounding away. Arthas trying to get some work done here. He's in a little bit of trouble. He does manage to chase off those three heroes. Incredible. Just want to take a beating from Arthas. I guess when he popped his ultimate, they just didn't feel safe. Red still down here in force, a little beat up from the battle. Um, Blue down two critical heroes right now, and they're going to go directly for the Golem. I like this move a lot. They know that later on those heroes are going to be respawning, and they don't want to be playing uh, cleanup there on the Golem while yeah. they're trying to engage in the battle, but they know they got the advantage now, so let's make use of it. So, you know, in a lot of the other MOBAs, even though the heroes are very different from each other, there's a lot of those tenants that sort of, you know, they abide by when making uh, new heroes here. I'm wondering what like the some of the general cooldowns are on the abilities because yeah, that'll obviously insane. dictate how often right. you can engage in battle if right. ultimates recharge. It, it depends or not. on the ultimates. We have a choice of ultimates for our players. You can choose between one or two different ultimates mm. when you get in. We're probably adding more ultimates as we go forward. Some of the ultimates are very spammable. Some of the ultimates might be even a 10 or 15 second cooldown. But in many cases, they're more like a 60 to 70 to 80 second cooldown. So that um, means you really got to pick your moment when you want to use those abilities. And That's some of them can short. be very impactful. I mean, that's short in a well, general well, sense, but... Given, but given a 20-minute you know, game, right? You've yeah. still got to pick your moments. You're going to get to do it maybe eight times at critical moments over the course of the game, maybe sometimes six, and there's a gnome. It's a Matt Cooper, a balance designer. They're picking off some... Uh, oh, God, Nine five to 75. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be rough. This is The red has got serious advantage. This is going to be really difficult for blue. Now, blue has grabbed 
a mercenary mechanic and they want to try to get some work done here. I mean, like, what hope does Blue have in this position? Because, I mean, I... It, it this really is the depends on the I've next team fight, yeah. right? We had a little bit of a burp there. That's, I'm glad it didn't crash. I almost died there for a moment. Uh, the, uh, it, it really depends on the next team fight and what happens. Obviously, you know, Red's in a clear situation of advantage. They've, they've done their homework and they've got a position where they're happy. So it's going to be... Um, uh, a, any move you're going to see from Blue at this point is going to be a little bit desperate. They're going to have to sort of go for a little bit of an all-in kind of play. Mm -hmm. And there's choices that they can make. We've seen some crazy strategies like just kind of ignore what's going on in the lanes, try to get as many mercenaries as possible. We've seen strategies involving on other maps, uh, critical camp. grave golems. You can capture them and do stuff. We've sometimes seen base race scenarios where you literally hide out near the enemy base, wait for them to go to yours, and then just charge in as fast as you can and see if you can get some damage <laughs> done. But I think you're going to see, um, if, if Blue's going to pull it out at this point, it's going to be an act of desperation. Or they're going to get um, clever and they're going to win this next team battle as that sad, sad little golem charges into battle there. I think he may be able to drop that tower. This is the oh, critical golem. It's freaking huge. Um, and you see they're popping cooldowns on these things. They're using ultimate abilities. Anything they can think of to drop this thing before it's too late. Red um, really trying to... I don't know if I quite like this move. We'll see how it pays off for them. They're going to grab a mercenary camp here in the middle and try to push for it. But I think their timing was a little bit off. I think they really wanted to be Red supported of that golem. And I think they would have won at this point. Um, but they chose instead to grab the mercenary camp. I think by the time those mercenaries show up, that tower's going to be dead, but you're also going to see um, that their golem is going to be gone. Now, both teams are level 20, I believe, at this point. This is yeah. a, no, level 19 for blue. That's a critical difference. This is a uh, huge loss. There's a special talent that comes along. At life. Now they're both level 20, called the Storm's Abilities, and they're incredibly powerful. And it's a break point in the talent tree. So you'll see players, when you cross that break point, try to get something done in the few seconds or minute they might have. Well, with that talent advantage. I mean, is is 20 the max level? Uh, 20 is not the max level. We do up to 25, but there is a... Uh, that break point is absolutely critical. And Red's just trying to get the mercenary camp so they can hopefully win this game with a big push. And it looks like the teams are even. The kills are fairly close. It's just so much damage has been done to Blue's base at this point. And they did manage to... Red did not get anything done with that Brave Golem. Red, very well clustered, ready for the big fight. Blue in position if they want it. There's Warfield, or excuse me, Sergeant Hammer moving forward, trying to engage... Everybody's looking for the right angle. Stitch is trying to get a little frisky there. ETC charging in. He takes quite a beating for it, but there's enough support in the area. I don't think it's really going to matter. Arthas really up front, closing in on Tehran. He does get the hit off. It looks like uh, there's a uh, great ultimate being used there to chase off Tyrande, and down goes Tyrande as well, killed by the Witch Doctor. There is a triple tap. Down goes ETC as well. Two heroes down now for Red. Blue in a pretty good position at this point. They are a little beat up. There's a great hook. It oh. looks like in a lot of trouble. He uses his ice block to survive, but he's not going to get him out of time. There's nobody to come to help. And that was the engagement we were talking about. That's exactly what needed to happen. They needed not to lose any too many heroes here. They're down two. They don't want to lose any more trying to pick off this one hero. Yeah, so, I mean, if we relate what just happened back to the mechanics of the map, it seemed like Red had a really huge opportunity yep. with the golem that once upon a time was here, but they abandoned it to do a huge minion push yep. in this top lane yep. with all five heroes. Yep. Now, what is it that one Team Blue in that fight? Was nope. it just positioning? Is it the fact that the tower was also there, or is it just the, general? The tower was a huge advantage, no yeah. question. The towers and the minions were definitely to their advantage. Whenever you're fighting in somebody's base, you're always going to be a little bit weaker than you were otherwise. And so um, they had that position, and they used it. I think their engagements were solid. I think they picked off the right heroes at the right time, and they managed Green to get done when they needed to get done. Now, yeah. here's the danger, right? Now, they've got three wounded heroes closing in. I'm not sure what they're going to try to accomplish here. I mean, obviously, they're tough enough at this point that the towns aren't super dangerous to them and they're gonna to try to push through this base, but Red is respawning, right? They're right back in. Now, Sergeant Hammer there can do some damage. Here comes ETC and to just wreck their day. I think <laughs> they're gonna lose a few critical heroes here. Stitches getting uh, absolutely crushed devour off there. ETC in a little bit of trouble, and that's uh, too many Red in position. Sergeant Hammer is down, Stitches will soon be down. Tyrael is running for his life. There's a big blast from Gazlo who drops him. Wonderfully done. He does have his storm power, so he will resurrect immediately, but he can't do that again very quickly. Blue is getting beat on back in their base right now. We can hear it through the audio as they're battling it out here in the top lane. Honestly, I thought they won that team fight. It put them in great position, and they are still in this game, but I kind of wish Blue had had the opportunity to make a little bit more of that temporary advantage. They had all five red heroes down. Admittedly, three of them were pretty beat up at the time, but I was hoping they could get more done with that. And now they're right back kind of where they're at with red st back in the game, still with the advantage in the lanes, still with a, not, not with a new Grave Golem, of course, but their Grave Golem will respawn where it died. So it's going to respawn pretty much right next to the core. And here goes Red, finally coming in and pushing out that castle they wanted to kill in that first attack. So 
right now the Haunted Mines are open, but it looks like Red has just decided we're going to abandon that. Yeah. This is the opportunity is that it. we feel like we had before. Yeah, the core is so vulnerable at this point. There's the ultimate from Witch Doctor trying to chase off the hero. As you can see, the area effect from that ability is so significant. The core is absolutely taking a beating. The heroes do so much damage at this point in the game. You really need to control the area under base. They're I don't just think there's anything firing they right can now. do. And yeah, just right-click core, and that is GG, the end. Well done, Team Red Blue. You had a chance for a minute, and you made it glorious and great, but in the end, Red pulls it out. Yeah, I mean, like, now, to, in terms of local strategy versus global strategy, like, there was a lot of moments where you're saying, oh, you know, this is a good opportunity to go for the Grave Golem. No, this is the time when they need to cluster together and go for a team fight. But if we had to describe, like, how Red played in that game, how do you describe games with these, like, really unusual maps? Do you say, like, oh, they're doing a very Grave Golem-focused strategy? I think that would be a legitimate way to describe it. Honestly, we need more guys like you in a chance with the oh, build. to make to, words up. To make words <laughs> up and tell us how this works. We didn't make up how StarCraft was cast, right? That was yeah, made up well, by our community, right? But I so. mean, like, is, it, is, it, is this game more about fluid, on-the-fly decisions? Yes. Or do you see compositions constructed to specifically well, go for the Grave Golem? Not yet, we don't. But you can probably expect down the road that you win, yeah. right? We just don't know. We haven't had that breadth of play. But right now, it's very fluid. It's very much about reading the board, knowing who's alive and who's not, what powers do we have in play, and making the right sort of judgment call as yeah. to where to proceed. So it's a very fluid, very creative strategic experience right now. Obviously, as the community studies the game more, I think you'll see a more intense experience where it's more known, it's more math-based, it's more understood. But right now, math. right now, it's, it's very fluid and very, uh, very intuitive. Now, I, I hope I wasn't making this up, but it seemed like the Team Red's abilities were generally a little bit more red-hued, and the blue team's abilities were... Bit more I don't view. know if we have Is a ton that? of that, and we have some of that going on right now. And we, we need to work on the clarity, obviously, a lot more. I mean, obviously, you may have been looking at that and going, oh, I hope Dustin knows what he's talking about, because right now there is a lot of noise <laughs> oh. going on on that screen. And that's well, I'm not going to make up on. what the abilities are, but totally. if you want me to die, I yeah, totally no, like, can. But there's wow. a lot of a noise in the abilities right now, and this is something we're continuing to work on going forward, trying to make the game as clean and readable as possible. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for casting with Dave. Was, that was, it was an absolute blast. It was a pleasure to do my first ever Here's the Stormcast with you, Dustin, because you know everything that actually happens in the game because you made it. <laughs> hey, thanks everybody for watching us today. We hope you enjoyed this, uh, this cast, and we will bring you many, many more to come in the weeks and months coming forward. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>